for this example, we're going to put our ideas about hypotheses into action. And you're going to see what some of the problems in this chapter are going to look like. They tend to be large paragraphs, sometimes large paragraphs with data attached to them. Um, so that would be a data table. But these, this particular page has no data tables attached. And we're not only going to write the null and I turn of hypotheses in symbols, but we're going to state the type of test. So we're going to do this in symbols. Um, words are nice too, so you might be asked at some point to write them in words also, just so you can explain what you're talking about. And then we're also going to state the type of test. And by that I mean left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. Okay, so let's look. And different colors are going to help us here because we're going to have to break this apart and find all the interesting bits. So Active Management of Labor, AML, is a group of interventions designed to help reduce the length of labor and the rate of cesarean deliveries of babies. According to a recent article, the average cost of having a baby in a U.S. hospital is $2,528. A random sample of 200 AML deliveries had a mean cost of $2,480 with a standard deviation of $766. Do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that on average, AML reduces the cost of having a baby in a hospital? Oh my goodness, so much stuff to talk about. Okay, so we start off, we know we're going to need an H0 and we know we're going to need an H1. And for that matter, I know that the null hypothesis is going to have an equal sign in it because it always does. So that much I've got. But now I have to kind of analyze what I'm seeing and see if I can see the parameter that I'm talking about. Remember, we have three parameters, four really. We have the mean, the proportion, standard deviation, and variance. All right, so let's see here. We're talking about on average, see that? The mean cost of babies, the average cost of babies. So that's implying that it's mu. Once it's mu here, it's mu here, right? So that word right there means it has to be talking about average. Okay, so now that I know I'm talking about average, now I have to think about what is assumed unless I can prove otherwise. What's the population values versus what's the sample values? So the population values are in there somewhere. <laughs> We've got to analyze it. So we assumed the cost of having a baby right here. This is the assumed value, right? So this is assumed to be true. So it's 2528 which by the way means it's the same number here. The null and alternative get the exact same number in both spots. Well, what about this 2480 and 766? What's going on there? Like, why isn't it that number? Because it says mean right next to it. See that mean right there? Uh, but it's talking about a sample. See this? A sample of 200 had a mean of 2480, standard deviation, all of that stuff is sample statistics, which remember we use to test the parameter that we assume. So you know n is 200, you know x bar, the sample mean was 2480, and s is 766, s being the sample standard deviation. Those values are used to run the test, which we're not doing in this section. <laughs> we would do that in section 10.3, because it's a mean one, and the mean ones are 10.3. So they're there to throw you off the trail. Well, I shouldn't say that. They're there to actually run the test. You actually desperately need those values, but you don't need them for this particular example because this particular example is all about developing the hypotheses. And all this sample statistics stuff is not what we're going to use. All right, so that's the sample stuff. So just hold off on that. We don't need it right now. We'll use it later. Now we need to figure out which direction we think we're going in. Hmm. So we need to see a direction from the words. You're looking for a key word in here that can help you figure out which way to go. I see it. It's right here. Reduces. Less than, right? So reduces means it's going to be less than right there. Now what kind of test was this? Because it asked us what's the type of test. This is a left-tailed test which also is a one-tailed test, in case you're wondering, because left-tailed tests are one-tailed tests. All right, what about letter B? According to a National Household Survey on Drug Abuse, 13.6% of 18 to 25-year-olds in the U.S. were current marijuana users 
or current users of marijuana or hashish in 2000. A psychology researcher at a university believes that the proportion of 18 to 25 year olds who are current users of those drugs has changed from the 2000 um, percentage. They conduct a poll of 1,283 random people in the U.S. in that age group and find that 205 of them are currently using those drugs. Do the data provide sufficient evidence to support the researcher's claim? All right. Well, as always, you begin with your H0 and your H1, your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis will always have an equal sign in it. As a matter of fact, I could do that right now for part C because I know that this will always be this way. Right. Okay, so now I've got to figure out what parameter I'm looking at here. So what's the parameter of interest? Well, I see a lot of percents flying around, right? Proportion, percentage, proportion, right? There's a percent right there. So this has got to be the population proportion. So it's the same number for both or same letter for both. And you have to use the population values, P and P, just like I used mu up here. So it has to be the parameter that you're using. Okay, so what do we assume to be true unless this researcher can prove otherwise? Well, we assume it's 13.6% because that's what it was back in the day. So you assume that it's 13.6%. Make sure you use a percent sign with a proportion unless you change it to a decimal. So you could write 0.136, that would be fine. And then that means that it has to be 13.6% here. It's always the same number and the same um, parameter for both. What changes is the sign. So for this one, what is the researcher claiming? The researcher claims that it has changed. See that? Changed. That's not equal to. All right, so this is a two-tailed test. It's both left and right simultaneously because we don't pick a direction. It's just not equal to. could go either way. And if you're wondering, well, wait, 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 what is all this other stuff, <laughs> right? So they conduct a poll of 1,283 ran random people, blah, 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 find the 205, ah. So that's the sample stuff. It's the sample info. You're told that N is 1,283. You're told that X is 205. You would get a P hat from that, right? P hat is X over N and you would use it to, it's 205 or 1,283, and you would run the test in section 10.2 when we learn how to run those tests. So the rest of it's there, but it's not part particularly part of this problem. This example is just about writing the hypotheses, and that orange stuff right there, that's what you would actually do to do the rest of the problem. But we're not there yet. All right, last but not least, a fast food chain states that the standard deviation of the wait times for customers in the drive through line is three minutes. A consumer's agency thinks that the variability in wait times is more than this. They obtain a random sample of 27 drive through wait times and find a standard deviation of 3.9. Hmm. Okay, so it's pretty obviously the standard deviation is the value that's assumed, which is sigma. And again, these are not tests we're going to run because they're from section 10.4. However, it's valuable to know how to set them up because the setup doesn't change, even though this is not a particular test for us to run. So we assume that it's three minutes because that's what it said, right? The, the organization said it's three minutes. Yes, you can have units over here. As a matter of fact, I should have had dollars on these ones, right? Because those were dollars. Sorry about that. So they can have units or percent signs or units, right? That's fine. So once it's three minutes there, it's three minutes here. It has to be the same for both. And then the e agency, or this mean the consumer's right agency, thinks that it might be more than. Now think about why this is something that we care about. When you go to a place like a fast food restaurant, you want consistency. Consistency is where they make their money. It's always irritating if you have to wait longer, right? So they want it to be that everybody knows that when they go through the drive through they're going to have to wait three minutes, no more, no less, right? Right around there. So we, excuse me, they're gonna have to wait a certain amount of time, but the variability from customer to customer is three minutes, sorry. So it could be a four minute wait, but you're not gonna waver more than three minutes than any other customer. Cause there's nothing more frustrating than somebody else having to wait no time at all when you have to wait a really long time and vice versa. So this isn't about how long you wait. It's about how much variability there is from customer to customer to customer, see? 
So it's not telling you that you won't have to wait. That's not what they're saying. And they're not saying that the wait is three minutes. They're saying that the variability from one car to the next is not more than three minutes, right? They're saying it's three minutes and the consumer's right agency thinks, no, 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 no. That variability, that wait from car to car or truck to truck or whatever is more than three minutes. Some people are having to wait a long time. Some people are not having to wait a lot, a lot of time at all. There's a lot of variability. And that's something that they don't particularly like, right? And actually the, the fast food chains don't like it either. They don't like a lot of variability. They want it to be consistent from customer to customer for wait time. All right. So then what's this other bit? Well, they're telling you N is 27 and then S is 3.9. And you would run the test with that info. If we were going to run that type of test, it would be section 10.4, but we're not actually going to do that test, at least not this semester. It might change for whatever semester you are watching this video in. And of course, this is a right tailed test. So we want to answer what type of test this was. And hopefully you're seeing, oh, this chapter is going to have big paragraph questions that I'm gonna to have to pull apart. And this is just the first step of a much larger process. And so all we're doing at this point is just practicing that first step, practicing how to write those hypotheses so that when we actually go to run the test, which I'm going to show you in just now, this is a hypothesis test setup that we'll learn in section 10.2, right? And you can see there's requirements eh, from chapter eight, all that stuff about the central limit theorem has to be true. And then step one is just writing your hypotheses. Is it a left-tailed, two-tailed, or right-tailed? That's all you're doing, okay? So you can see, oh, that's the first step of a much larger process. And so all we're doing in this example is just practicing that first step so that we are ready in the next section to do that full page process that it's going to take to run a hypothesis test.